Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. For you that are here and for you um, who are visiting with us online, we're happy you chose to worship with us this morning. A few announcements. You have a purple announcement sheet front and back. Um, some that I would like to draw to your attention. Um, September 18th here at church in the lounge following the 9 o'clock service will be a eight-week class morning book study um, by Dr. Dick Sorgema on Doug Newton's Fresh Eyes on Jesus' Miracles. Um, you may order the book or let, and let Dick know if you're coming. The information is here on your purple sheet. The Friendly Center will meet August 31st at 11 here at St. Mary's. Um, there are announcements about the food sharing in the back of the church. I think there's some jalapeno peppers back there this morning. Um, Beth would like you to know that the deadline for the Spirit is this Tuesday, August 23rd. So if you have a group or, or information that you need the congregation to know, it would be best to get that information into her. Most importantly this morning, we want to welcome Pastor Donna Brown. She's here from Village Church in downtown Milwaukee, and she will be our presiding pastor for today. So with that, let us stand and sing verses 1 and 2 of hymn number 853. confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, and I invite you to take a moment of quiet to look at your relationship to God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, Save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. We continue by singing hymn 617, We Come to You for Healing, Lord.
hear this greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, 58th chapter. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, If you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading today is from the 12th chapter of Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet 
and a voice whose words may the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who has warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Praise we sing to
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the Sabbath, uh, or the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from his manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. You may go ahead and have a seat. Just wait. Wait. Just wait for it. Wait. Wait at the red light, even when there's no traffic coming. Wait. Wait in the grocery store. You know now for that one stacked checkout line? Just stand in line and wait. Wait on the phone when you're trying to get that tech support or do anything online with some company. Just wait and listen to the nice music. It'll be good. Wait for the doctor to come in, for the re test results to come back. Wait. Well, if you're like me, I hate waiting. <laughs> I am no good at it. They say patience is a virtue, and that's not mine. It is definitely not mine. So when I hear or read the words of the leader of the synagogue and his reaction to Jesus' healing that woman, my reaction, um, some people would say, is maybe not pastorally appropriate. I really think if we listen, if we think about this text, this story from Luke's Gospel, I hope your reaction would as well be as maybe visceral, as indignant, as annoyed as perhaps the woman was. We're not told. The people seem to like what Jesus then said and did, but of course, it really seems like Jesus was mm, annoyed. Uh, by the leader of the synagogue. Because this woman, she came to the synagogue, she came on that Sabbath day when Jesus was there. She had done her waiting. She had been stuck, looking down at the ground for 18 long years. And I don't know if you, have, I'm sure you've probably seen folks who are bent over with all the back problems. You know, lots of folks have back problems these days. 
And those folks bent over, looking down at the ground, so hard to look up and see someone in their face-to-face. -face. To look up at the sun or the stars or the moon at night, she had been waiting long enough. There was no point for her to wait another day, another hour, another minute waiting. We get told to wait. And folks, I am now older. Um, I am in my 50s. Uh, there's gray and blonde, which comes from a bottle, yes. Um, but I'm in my 50s, and, and um, I think I'm pretty much done just kind of waiting for, for life to happen, because our lives are precious. These are gifts that we're given, but they're also very tenuous. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. You all know that. We don't know if tomorrow we'll even wake up. We don't know. So we do not need, should not, waste our life waiting. We've wasted sometimes, I, you know, I have, with pain. I've done bad decisions in action. People have been forced to wait through oppression. I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but I don't want to waste another single precious moment waiting, waiting for healing. And that's what this is about. This is about the healing that we are given, whether it's in our bodies, our minds, our relationships. Now, of course, healing does not necessarily mean cure for all that ails us, but maybe a coming to terms with what we are dealing with, coming to some kind of peace with it. Freedom. We shouldn't have to wait for freedom. So this woman comes to the synagogue. We are not told whether she asks. Seems like she doesn't. But she's with the crowd of people. They may, might have been begging and pleading. We aren't told. But what we are told is that Jesus sees her. Sees her, one among many. And I think it is so powerful that he saw her. God's embodied love points her out and heals her. And that is God's will for her. Jesus reminds then the leader of the synagogue, the woman, the people in that place, and us today, that that nameless woman, just like the nameless people all around us, you know, the folks who are struggling and suffer, and those we know well, that their salvation, their healing, their freedom, their life and their well-being, the well-being of God's children is of utmost importance. And there is no better time than right now. This is so important that Jesus actually is willing to break a law. And not just a law, you know, a commandment. You know how we kind of go, oh, the Ten Commandments. Well, yeah, Jesus broke it, broke one of them by healing, by touching. His speaking was fine, but as soon as he reached out, that was considered a work. And he broke the commandment. The commandment that, you know, in that first reading that you heard from Isaiah is lifted up is so important. But you know what's more important than rules and laws? You. You. Your healing, forgiveness, God's love. And that's what Jesus is telling us, tells that leader of the synagogue, tells the people that day. There is no inherent good in suffering. God does not want us to wait 
and to suffer. A life of healing, forgiveness, and wholeness and freedom is most important, is more important in God's eyes than my convenience, my preferences, even more important than religious rituals, traditions, institutional sustainability, <laughs> laws. In matters of forgiveness, in matters of healing and freedom and feeding people and having people live and not suffer, reconciliation, advocating for justice, there is no better time than right now. So I'm going to tell you today in my sermon that impatience is a virtue. Yes, you heard it here. Impatience is a virtue because time may not be on our side, but God is. Time may not be on our side, but God is. So I'd like to share with you, as I close, some words of the poet Mary Oliver. And you might have heard the last line when I get there. You might go, oh, yeah, that's kind of familiar. I've seen it on a plaque or something. Um, I'm back in the dating game, which is not fun, by the way. But anyway, um, occasionally, more often, you know, more often than I would imagine, I see on these dating profiles this last line of this poem. Um, it's a really good poem, but I thought I would share the whole thing because what it does is it um, ties all of us together, God's creation, all of God's children, with the tenuous nature of life and the importance of our gift of life. So Mary Oliver writes, Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay a Attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day long. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me. What is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your wild and one precious, one wild and precious life? And I hope it's not waiting. Amen.
Please join me in professing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds, our local bodies of water and our wildlife refugees. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress, especially Mike, Cheryl, Cindy, Diane, Melissa, Sally, Kim, Leo, Lily, Carol, Robert, Dawn, Joe, Joan, Alice, Bob, Heidi, Marion, Karen, and the families of Pastor Marvin Eckler. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, 
receive our prayer. Generations, bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive then the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it 
it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, for healing. We join together to proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit in your church without end. And we join together, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, and let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet. All is now ready. Right now, you don't have to wait. God's grace is for you. You may be seated.
you are able. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who are set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. We go out singing hymn number 871, Sing Praise to God. We are God's people, gifted by the Spirit. Thanks be to God.